Okay, good afternoon everyone. Uh, my name is Mohamed Zofakars and today I'm going to give a presentation uh, on Edpan MySQL exploitation. So basically it's about how you can conduct a remote code executions on the MySQL platform. Here's a brief introduction about myself. I'm a security consultant for Next Generation Security Software Limited. Uh, we are based in Southwest London. Uh, here's my email address, so if you have any questions about my talks, just please free to drop me in an email. So here are our agenda on today. So basically we will cover on the introduction. So on introductions, uh, I will explain the differences between the stack query and non-stack query because that is one of the important things to understand on this presentation. And then uh, I will explain how we can conduct a remote code execution on the database connector that do not support stack query. and compared to the database connector that supports stack query. So basically, we'll cover four different databases, and they are MySQL, Microsoft, SQL, Postgres, SQL, and Oracle. And then the next part, uh, I will explain how you can conduct remote code executions on the LAM, on the WAM platform, and we will differentiate uh, a different method you can use to attack these two different platforms. And the last part is a demo. So I'll show you how we can done this by using the tool that I wrote. So I'm pretty sure like most of the people in this room has a clear idea about SQL injection. So basically it's a, a technique where you can manipulate the SQL statement through the applications. In most cases you will find that the SQL injection is used to read, modify and delete database data. However, in some cases, it's possible to conduct remote code executions by attacking this type of vulnerability. Okay, so what is stack query? Stack query is the condition where the multiple SQL statements are allowed and they are normally being separated by semicolons. So stack query has been known, widely known to be abused to write a file on the database server. In the Black Hat Amsterdam 2009, Bernardo Damali demonstrated how you can conduct remote code executions on the SQL, uh, on the platform that supports stack query. And today I will demonstrate on how you can perform the similar technique to conduct remote code executions on the database connector that do not support stack query. So our case study today is MySQL PHP. As we know, the MySQL is widely used with PHP and they are a part of the software stack of the LAM and the WAM environment. So if you look at here, this is some technique you can perform when you uh, attack the database connector that do support stack query. So by having a multiple statements, you can do many things that can lead into remote code executions. So I will explain some of the example here. Table creation is used, normally it's used to store your arbitrary data. And this technique normally used for, to attack the MySQL platform and Postgres SQL. And then the data injection into the table through the inset syntax is used when you want to inject your arbitrary data into the table that you just created. And by 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 injection techniques is normally used when you have a larger data. So basically when you try to upload the executable file, you will find your data is large and uh, you are tied to use uh, some limited bytes, especially when you attack the get request, and you will find that you need to do a data byte by byte injection by injecting your data byte by bytes until the whole data is completed into your tables. And then the other technique is the UDF injection technique. If you heard about this, the UDF basically uh, a technique where you can inject your UDF function by attacking SQL injection. And this will uh, normally use on the MySQL and Postgres database. So, and then the executions and the creation of the new stop procedures, basically uh, this is widely used on the Microsoft SQL where you can create your store procedure or execute existing procedure. And if, for example, you want to execute XPCMD shell, you basically need a statement creation using a exact syntax. So you basically need uh, to use a uh, stack query to perform these actions. And the privilege escalation is a technique where you can escalate privilege from a low privilege user to become the data uh, administrator user. As you will find that most of these talk, to conduct remote code execution, you are required to be a high level privilege user. And then the other one is donate assembly creations. Uh, 
this technique is used uh, on the latest, latest version of the Microsoft SQL because uh, the recent version of Microsoft SQL, uh, the .NET framework is supported, so you can basically uh, use create a, a .NET assembly by using a create syntax. So if you look at the, this slide, you will find that when your database connector do not support stack query, you are only too tight to use or and and union. And these techniques are good for data extractions, but it's not good enough for to conduct a remote code execution. If you look at this stack table here, you will find uh, on the top side we have three different types of the applications. On the left side, we have four different types of databases. As you can see on the MySQL, there are two applications that do not support stack query by default. They are ASP and PHP. And our case study today, we are going to focus on MySQL PHP as we already know that the MySQL is widely used by PHP. So now I'm going to explain how you can conduct remote code executions on some database connector that support stack query. So we will start the Microsoft SQL. The, uh, so you can basically use uh, XP and shell to create an arbitrary debug script. And this arbitrary debug script can be converted to become an executable file by using a debug DSC command. And then you can just simply use the XP CMD shell to execute the arbitrary data. So this is like a widely uh, technique that's been used for a long time to execute command on the Microsoft SQL server. And then the other technique is, uh, this technique can be applied on the recent version of the SQLs where you can simply create the arbitrary CS files and then compile your, uh, your CS file using csc.exe. So when you have a .NET framework installed, you basically will find this command. And then you can simply use a create assembly syntax to directly import your binary into the Microsoft SQL server. And instead of creating your arbitrary CS file and compile it, you can also use a UNC path to directly download a DLL file and then uh, use this create assembly to directly import your binary. So here are some limitations. As you know, debug exe is normally used to uh, assembly, uh, it's used for the x32 processor. So if you try to attack the x64 machine, you will find the debug exe in some of the uh, Microsoft Windows has been removed. Uh, and also, your session user must have to have a control server permissions to execute the store procedure. And also you will find in the recent version of the Microsoft SQL XP CNB shells and your CLR are disabled by default. However, if you are a member of the system admin role, you can just simply enable back this either store procedure or enable back your CLR. And uh, if you are not a member system admin role, you can basically uh, conduct a previous escalation attack so by using an open row set. So if you know a password for your database servers, you can basically use open row set to connect back to the database server and escalate your session user to become a system admin roles. And by having this, you can basically directly uh, enable back your store procedure or the other way you can do is you can create your own store procedure that perform the same action. So you can create a store procedure then execute system command. So for Postgres SQL, you can simply use a UDF injection technique. So what can you do is uh, you can store your shared library into a table by using the byte by byte injection technique. So you can inject your arbitrary shared library into a table and then transfer this arbitrary shared library into any writable directory and then use the create syntax to create a UDM function. And normally this type of UDM function that you want to create is a UDM function that can execute system command. And then you can simply use a similar technique to upload your arbitrary data. So this arbitrary data can be anything from a shellcode or malware. So you can just basically upload your arbitrary data into other writable directory and then use the UDF function that you just created, the UDF that can execute system command to execute this arbitrary data. 
So the limitation here is you need to have a super user access. And you will find in most of uh, the database server, when you, like I mentioned before, every time when you want to conduct remote code execution, you are basically need to have a high privilege access. And here are some other privilege are required here. You need to have a file, insert, create, and update request. So basically, file is used to, uh, to access a file, and then the insert request is used to inject your uh, arbitrary file, and then create is used to create uh, your UDF function. So for my MySQL, uh, basically, you can use a similar technique, but this is only work on the database connector that supports that query. So you can apply this method when you attack the ASP.NET and MySQL. Because basically the database connector of this application and database server I have a stack query supported. So you can simply use a similar technique. You can use either a byte by byte injection or union select to dump your arbitrary data. The only difference is your arbitrary uh, UDF file need to be stored either in the shared library or the system variable plugin directory. So it can be either only in these two directory. So you can't upload this file on the temp directory. And then you can basically create your UDM function from uh, this arbitrary uh, UDF file that you just uploaded. And then you can use a similar technique, upload your arbitrary file, and then they use this UDF function to execute your arbitrary file. So you can see here your trigger mechanism here is your UDF function. So uh, here is an example. I give an example on MySQL as this is what we're going to focus on today. So this is only works when you attack the ASP.NET application where the stack query is enabled. And you can see that the semicolon is, the, the semicolon is where you start a new statement creation. So on the first lane, you can see here this is where you create the tables and the table called temps and then have to be type block because so you're going to uh, upload an exe file on it. So you can simply use an insert statement to inject your arbitrary file. On the second line, you can see there, uh, this technique is used when you have a larger data. So you basically need to inject byte by byte. So you will replace that 41, 41, 41 into a new arbitrary file until the whole arbitrary file is successfully uploaded into your table. And then the third line there, you can see this is where you select the whole arbitrary file and then dump into either shared library directory or plugin directory. As you can see in this example, I upload this arbitrary file into uh, uh, sh uh, not shared library. Uh, this is uh, the plugin directory. And this value is, you can find this value on your MySQL uh, configuration file. And then the last part, this is where you started to create your UDM function by using this DLL file. So the limitation here, as usual, you need to have all this privilege. And uh, in the old version of the MySQL, your UDF file must be stored in the shared library. And by default, the shared library only not, is not writable. Because uh, you will find that most version of MySQL you are not allowed to run your MySQL daemon as a root. You've been forced to run your, uh, but, but it's still possible if you force your database to run as a root. So if your database runs as a root, you basically can bypass the technique. You can basically write into any directory. So you can simply write into the shared library. And then Microsoft realized this issue and what they did is uh, they came up with the variable plugin directory. So in the recent version of MySQL, you will find that your UDF must be stored into this directory, and by default, this directory does not, does not exist. So this directory only exists if the database administrator create this directory and then set this value in its Microsoft, uh, MySQL configuration file, and then upload its UDF file. So if you be able to uh, find the database server that has this functionality, where it contains a variable plugin directory, you basically can upload your UDF file here and then create your UDF function from this directory. And now I'm going to explain how you can conduct a remote code execution on the database connector that do not support stack query. The first example here, we're going to talk about Oracle. 
because Oracle is uh, pretty interesting here, because by default, Oracle do not support stack query. However, if you can find the PLSQL injections on Oracle, you'll be able to inject uh, you can be able to inject in between the anonymous PLSQL block, and this allows you to use stack query. And some Oracle application server come with a built-in vulnerable PLSQL packages. So if you can find these packages, uh, vulnerable packages, you can basically abuse the functionality by inject uh, your arbitrary data on the anonymous PLSQL block. So this is only possible if you could find these vulnerable packages. So the limitation here, uh, it's easier if you could find the PLSQL packages. So if you can't find this, it's pretty harder. And the other is uh, you're required to have a high privilege like other database as well. But it's still possible to escalate privilege uh, to become a DBA user when you attack Oracle. So. Uh, now we're going to uh, focus on the MySQL. So as we know, the MySQL is widely used as a database component for the LAM and the WAM environment. And by default, stack query is not supported. So you can't perform a UDF injection technique on the MySQL PHP. This is because you can't allow to have a create syntax because you're not allowed to use a new, stack, uh, new statement creation. However, even the new statement creation is not possible, it's possible uh, to extend an existing select statement. So if you could find the SQL injection on the select statement, which normally would be in the select statement, you can simply uh, extend the existing, uh, the existing statement by using a union select. So I'm going to explain uh, how we can abuse this uh, union select to uh, upload our arbitrary data and how this technique is, uh, can be used to conduct remote code execution. And the limitation here, you're required to have a file permissions and also you're required to know your web server directory. This is because your trigger mechanism is in this case is not UDF function, but your trigger mechanism in this uh, case is your PHP script, because your PHP script is used to execute your arbitrary, file, arbitrary data. And also, uh, like I mentioned before, uh, in, on Linux, you will find your web server directory is not writable in most of the Linux unless you force your uh, MySQL D to run as a root user. And you will find that if you have an Apache install using a distro, like example, Ubuntu or Fedora, and uh, this distro uh, will force your MySQL server to run as a non-root user, so you have some limitation here. So if uh, traditionally, we can simply use a PHP script to execute system command. So you can basically just inject a short PHP with this PHP system function to execute system command. So if we can just simply execute this, why we need more reliable shell? Uh, why we need to upload an arbitrary file? A good example of this is Metaprater and the VNC shell codes. As we know here, the Metaprater uh, is very useful in the post-exploitation process. So you can basically use a metaprater to escalate privilege uh, of a local system to become a domain user. For example, if your uh, LAM or the WAM system is run as a domain. And also you can use a metaprater to do a process migrations, and you can do a metaprater to capture traffic, keyboard logging. And you will find in the next release of the Metasploit, it contains, there are so many new features on the metaprater and uh, Metaprater now has a SSL connection supported, so it's very useful to cover your track. So now you have a Metaprater run on the top of the SSL connections. And then uh, this is what I've been waiting for so long, is uh, Metaprators that can run on a POSIX system. And that will be targeted to be supported on the next version, which is 3.4 development version. So VNC shell is useful when you have to have a graphic user interface on the compromised system. As we know that most of the application on Windows run as a GUI, so by having a VNC shell, it helps you to do many things compared to just have a Windows command shell. So we know a Windows command shell is a bit limited. So uh, 
here is a technique how we can conduct a remote code executions on the MySQL PHP platform. So it's just it's just a brief technique. So basically, we can just upload a compressed arbitrary file into the web server using a union slide, and then we will upload a few PHP scrapes on the web server directory. And this PHP script is used to decompress back your compressed arbitrary file back to its original size. And then we can simply use uh, some of the PHP function uh, to execute this arbitrary file. And here is the technique where you can use to fingerprint MySQL. Uh, so for command, remote command execution on the MySQL PHP, fingerprinting of the MySQL version is not required. However, fingerprinting of the amount of columns on your uh, amount of column is necessary. This is because you are using a union select. And when you use a union select, your second query need to be has the same amount of column as the first query. So in this case, you need to know how many columns are required. So if you look at uh, attacking uh, MySQL and ASP.NET, you not use you, you basically don't use the technique. You basically use a different technique. So you need to know what type of versions the MySQL uh, uh, running on the back end because uh, you need to know either you want to upload your arbitrary UDF files uh, on the shared library or in the plugin directory. So it's based on the uh, version of the MySQL. The latest version will require you to upload into the plugin directory, while the old version require you to upload on the shared library. So here, are two simple techniques can be used to fingerprint the amount of columns. So the first techniques are basically known as a time-based injection technique combined with the union slide. So basically, by using this technique, you can basically know how many columns required. And the second one is much more simpler by using uh, order by statements to find out how many columns is required. And here are some basic techniques to read and write files on the MySQL PHP platform. So basically, we can simply use a load file to read a file and then use the select into out file or down file to write a file on the uh, MySQL server. So for select load in file, it's required you to have a file privilege. And also, this file must be readable by all, and its size must be less than a maximum allowed packet bytes. And this value is set in your Apache configuration file. This default value is small, but it's sufficient enough to read a sensitive file on your database, uh, on your web server or database server. For example, if you want to conduct uh, information gathering, uh, example, try to fingerprint uh, your web server directory so you can basically uh, read your Apache configuration file as this configuration file contain a sensitive information about web server directory. As you can see in the example, you try to use a load file to load a default configuration of Apache file to discover where is your web server root directory is located. So for select into out file or dump file, uh, you're required to have a file privilege. Uh, the only issue here is when you use the union slide, you can only uh, you are limited to use only one request. So this is different when you attack uh, the database connector that supports that query, as you can use a byte by byte injection technique to upload your the whole uh, your arbitrary data byte by byte until the completed data is is injected into a table before you dump into any directory. So in this case, you are limited to use only one request to dump the whole arbitrary file. And another issue here is, uh, sadly, the file that you create is not executable by default on the Linux. However, I'm going to explain uh, on my future slide how we can change the directory to be executable, sorry, uh, how I can change this file permission to be executable and how we can bypass this uh, maximum limit that allow as we are only re uh, allowed to have only one injection every time to upload the whole arbitrary file. So here is some techniques, other techniques can be used to fingerprint a web server directory. So basically, we can simply use load file method to read a default configuration of Apache files, or in the second method is known as the error generation method. 
So error generation method is a technique where you can uh, inject some bogus data as part of your SQL statement because in some cases the, your PHP will generate you an error and this error can contain uh, sensitive information about web server directory. So here are some challenges in writing arbitrary file through the union slide. Firstly, you will find your GET request is only limited up to 8,190 bytes on your Apache. And the second issue that you can have here is uh, your data from the first query can overwrite your file header. As I already mentioned before, when you use union select, your first statements, your, sorry, your first query need to be the same, uh, same amount of column of your second query. And you will find when you write your data, your data from result from the first query will overwrite your file header and this can potentially corrupt your file. And then the other issue is data from the extra column can extra unnecessary data into your arbitrary file and this also can potentially corrupt your arbitrary file. So now I'm going to explain how we can fix all the issue. So we can simply use PHP zlib module to compress our arbitrary file. So this can help us to successfully use only one request to upload the whole arbitrary file. So in my experience, from 9,625 bytes, I was able to compress uh, my arbitrary file up to only 630 bytes. So uh, I can say in most cases, you'll be able to bypass uh, a lot of things, including a web application firewall. As some web application firewalls will limit you only to certain uh, length, how many bytes you, you can have on your GET request especially. And then this file can be uh, easily decompressed back using a PHP GZ uncompressed function on the destination so you can force your uh, compressed arbitrary file to uh, back to its original size when you decompress it. And here is how can you remove the uh, unnecessary data. As, as you can see here, uh, when you use unit select, your result of the first query will overwrite your file header. So to prevent this is to happen, you can simply inject non-existing value on your where clause. So you can use this technique to force your application to return you a null data. Example that I have here, if you can see here, uh, question equal to 169, that will return me a string called DEFCON. And then after the union select, then I have my arbitrary file. As you can see on the second column, like some bunch, you know, weird character there, they are actually the, our arbitrary data. And you can see at the bottoms, uh, I tried to highlight on the first six byte there. And that actually a string called DEFCON and that's actually overwrite my file header. So every time you want to execute this file, it will work because uh, the, your file header has been overwritten by the first query. So if you can change this question equal to 169 to anything, the non-existing value, which is not 169, you can force the application to remove a string called DEFCON so you basically uh, won't write your file header. So that's pretty simple. So this is how you fix your column issue. As, uh, as I mentioned before, your second query required the same amount of column of your second query. So for example, if you have a three columns on your first query, you are required to have a three column as well on your second query. And in some cases, you will find that if you inject your arbitrary data into one of the columns, and some random data in other columns, you can potentially corrupt your code. So to prevent this to happen, you can simply inject your arbitrary data only on the first columns and then any random data on the second column onward. And this won't corrupt your file. This is because if you remember that you are actually not upload the arbitrary file, you are upload a compressed arbitrary file and your compressed arbitrary file has been compressed using a zlib. So zlib uses addler32 checksums, and this value is added at the end of your compressed arbitrary file. So in RFC, it's already stated uh, 
that anything after this value will be ignored during the compression process. So you can basically abuse the functionality by injecting your arbitrary data on the first columns and some random data on the second column onward. So this is one of the weaknesses uh, you can find on the allergy to checksum. As an example that I can have here, you can see the blue font, this is where uh, my uh, arbitrary data is injected. And then because I require to use the second and third column, I just simply inject a null byte on the second column outward. And you can see here, uh, the null byte has been injected at the end of the file. And this file will have any issue when you try to decompress back to its original size. And here is just some technique you can use to buy a, bypass some uh, security software and devices. Uh, like example here, we can simply use, a, if we want to upload a Metasploit shellcode on your LAMP or WAM, you can just simply a Metasploit shellcode encoder as uh, some of these kind of help, helps you to bypass some of the web application firewalls, intrusion detection system, and even antivirus. And for the PHP script injection, you can basically evade this by using a base64 encoder. So you basically encode your PHP script before you upload it. And then the other technique is uh, you can simply use a PHP GZ compress and also the PH, uh, PHP GZ uncompressed function to compress your arbitrary file to bypass the web application firewalls, uh, bypass the limit, upload on your machines and then decompress back before you execute it. So during the transaction, you'll be able to bypass the maximum limit, especially on the get request. Because normally on the post, post request, uh, by default you have two gigs. So normally web applications still allow you to use a, a long length. So you basically can simply upload your uh, arbitrary file on the post request without any issue compared to the get request. Okay, so now I'm going to explain how you can conduct remote code executions on the LAM on the WAM platform. So uh, here is some technique how you can conduct remote code execution on the LAM platform. So as I mentioned before, by default, the directory on Linux is not writable by the MySQL user. And you will find that most of the recent version of the MySQL, your MySQL will run as a low privilege user and normally a MySQL user. And you are not allowed to upload your arbitrary file into your web server directory. So this is different if you could find a MySQL that run as a root user, you can abuse the functionality just write any web server directory without having any issue. However, there are some application that required the application to have a writable web server directory. A good example of this is a database server that allow user to upload contents. For example, uh, some application allow user to upload a photo and this photo is located on one of the web server directory. So the, app, uh, the web administrator required to set this directory to be writable. So if you could find this type of application, you can basically abuse by writing your arbitrary file into one of these directory. And then the other issue is uh, your uploaded file on the web server uh, is not executable. So this is one of the issue on Linux. However, this is not actually an issue because you can basically read the same file contents and write it into another file using PHP script and then you can basically use a ch mode to change the permission of file to become executable and now your new arbitrary file is not belong to the MySQL user anymore it will belong into the web server user however it's still executable so once you pop a shell you will get a shell that belongs to the web server user and here is some technique how you can use the command re remote code execution on the web platform. So basically on the web platform, it's, you can, I can say it's 100% will work. It's because by default, the MySQL run as a local system user. And this user allow you to write anywhere in the web server directory. So you can simply upload into one of the uh, web server root directory and then simply use a PHP script to execute this file. 
And now, now is the demo. I will show you how uh, the tools that I wrote can uh, execute or conduct a remote code execution on the Lemon WAM platform. So it's basically it's just a, a MySQL injection takeover tools uh, to demonstrate how this can be done. And it has an integration with the Metasploit framework, so you basically can integrate it to upload and execute your Metasploit shellcode. So this tool can be downloaded in the URL given. So here's are some features of the MySQL. Sorry, MySQL. Uh, it contains a few different modules. So basically, a SQL injection detection module is to use to detect how many columns are required on your injection and to detect whether your injection is successfully. Uh, be conducted. And uh, it also contains a fingerprint directory module. So basically, it uses two different techniques, which is known as load file and also energy error generation technique to uh, discover your web server directory. And then a fingerprint operating system module is used to fingerprint whether your uh, backend run on the LAM or the WAM environment. So this is useful when you want to create your payload because your payload uh, has to be a suitable payload either for WAM or the LAM. And then the payload is simply uh, a module that will integrate with Metasploit payload and will create a payload for you. So basically, uh, there are some differences here. You can see uh, for Windows, uh, it contains a bind and the reverse shellcode payload, while on the Linux, it has an extra, it has a fine sock shellcode. So this is useful when you have uh, firewall restrictions that you are only allowed to connect into the same port. So you can basically use a fine sock shellcode. And the exploit module is used to upload and execute your shellcode. And now I'm going to show you uh, this tool. So, so a brief explanation here about configuration file. Uh, so it basically, it, it's, it's pretty simple. You just have to put your URL, uh, whether it's post or get request, and where is your metasploit uh, is located. And then either your data type is integer or numeric. So it's very handy. Hope you can see that. Okay, so now we're going to start with the test module. So basically, a test module uh, is uh, it's try to test whether how many columns is required here. As you can see here, uh, the injection is successfully, and you will find that uh, it contains only one column. And then the second one is an operating system module. So basically, it will try to load a default file for Linux and Windows and try to discover whether it runs on the LAM or the WAM environment. So in this example, you can see uh, okay, it's successfully. Uh, bit fingerprinted and it runs on the Linux. And then the third method is uh, try to fingerprint your web server directory. So basically, you use two different methods. You try to load the default file of, uh, of the Apache, and if this is failed, it's going to turn into the second uh, second technique, which is try to inject a bogus data as part of the SQL statement to force the application to return you a sensitive information about this directory. So in this example, you can see we have successfully uh, load the Apache configuration file. And as you can see here, you will find that this is our web server root directory is located. And then the third one is payload module. So basically, you have a few arguments here. Uh, because it's Linux shellcode, right? So you basically actually it contains another one, but I don't add it in this demo. So basically, you can choose either you want to have a bind shellcode or a reverse shellcode. So in this example, uh, I tried to create a reverse shellcode on the port 6666. And now it's trying to integrate with the Metasploit shellcode and create a suitable payload for your environment. And now the payload is successfully, uh, successfully been created. And now uh, we will exploit it. And once I run the export module, you will see that some bunch arbitrary data have been uploaded. And uh, the first arbitrary data is actually uh, our compressed arbitrary data that have been compressed using a zlib. And then 
uh, this file will be decompressed back. The second payload is a payload that used to decompress back this file to its original size. And then the third payload is a P so basically to execute your payload. And then it will execute the Metasploit listener, try to wait for the connection. Okay, so now you will see the Metasploit is listening on a port 6666 and waiting for the connection. Okay, so now you will see uh, your shellcode is successfully executed and now you are on your LAM environment. Uh, so that is all for the presentation and the demo. Uh, now it's a question and answer time, so if you have any questions, feel free to ask me. Uh, you mean this similar tools, right? Yeah, no, well, I, I was just asking if you are aware of any tool which actually implements the uh, UDF technique. Okay, uh, I can say the first tool that I see that can perform this, but it's not for MySQL server, it's for Microsoft SQL, SQL Ninja. Okay, okay, so yeah. SQL Ninja works, uh, but it only works on the Microsoft database. Yeah, I, I was asking, for example, about SQL map because actually I was interested in uh, that. Yeah, SQL maps, uh, that's what I'm mentioning about Bernardo Demoli yeah, in yeah. this slide. So actually he created the, uh, the same tools that do the same thing, but uh, he's using a stack query technique while my technique is uh, attacking the MySQL PHP. So the differences is the SQL map works for uh, ASP.NET and PHP, but not MySQL PHP, mm -hmm. and yeah, yeah. Uh, m SQL map contains more feature. It, it's not only can attack uh, the WAM or the LAM environment, but it also can use to do the UDF injection techniques for uh, Postgres SQL as well. So okay. it has more functionality than my tool. Well, and actually the last, it's, uh, last thing is actually a comment because, um, well, it's remarkable work. I mean, it's nice tool. We can automatize everything, but uh, I see major limitation, which is w you assume that web server and database server are on within the same machine, yep. which is actually not, not really true in most of cases within corporations. Yeah, so so and and uh, as far as I know, actually there are no techniques to um, execute code whenever there are no, wh where whenever you can't use text queries on yep. you, MySQL and... Uh, that is one of the limitations of the stack query. So you are limited uh, to use the PHP script. So that is one of the reasons that why it has to be on the same machine. So I can say that every technique has its limitation and mm -hmm. that yeah, is yeah, one sure. of my limitations. No, no, yeah, yeah, but that's, that's for sure. Okay. And I, I can say so far that uh, anything else you can use uh, to trigger your executable file if, if you don't have stack query. Because, uh, I mean, like, to upload the arbitrary file is easy, but to execute it, you need a function. So, for example, on the, uh, if you have stack query, you can basically use a UDF. And even the UDF has some limitation because in the recent version of the MySQL, you will find this UDF, uh, the, the folder that you need to upload your UDF file also are not writable. So they are 
yeah, I can say like most of the technique has its limitation. Yeah, that's yeah. for sure. Okay, thanks. Time for one more question. Okay, so if there's no question, I will end my presentation. And I would like to give some credit to all these people that helps me to do my research. So thanks for coming.